Hello everybody. Uh, it's been a little bit of time since I made a video. had my whole craft room remodeled and trying to get back up to speed with getting that back in order. But if you noticed, or maybe you don't have a Glowforge yet, but a whole bunch has changed recently in the beginning of April. And there are new features available and also a pre-trial of what's going to be called the Glowforge Premium. It's going to be a subscription service where you can pay to have certain features available to you. Glowforge is setting up what they're calling Glowforge Print, which is the features that are available for free to everyone uh, for all models of the Glowforge. And then there's also the Glowforge Premium, which you will pay for, but you can use these features um, with every model of Glowforge also. There is also a new feature that is in beta right now to make it easier to use your pass through slot if you have the Pro model. Um, I'm hoping that. They'll either roll that out soon or else I can get in on the beta testing and then I can try that out for you. So right now we're going to go to app.glowforge.com as usual, but uh, you'll notice that now here it says create. And when you click on that, there's this new option of new link design. So we're going to click on that and it'll take us into our design space here. You'll notice that most of this up here at the top looks completely different now. And this trial here with the diamond is telling us that we are in the premium subscription trial. So they're letting everyone try these features out for free right now. We don't know how long that's going to last um, before they make us start paying for it. Uh, we also don't know how much it's going to cost. I think the idea is to let us all use it and get hooked and then make us pay for it. The first thing we'll try out is this new giant plus sign here. It said you'll have access to millions of graphics and that you can type in anything and be able to find images for that. Uh, so there are quite a few images here for cat. I tried playing around with this earlier and I can never get the cat to actually load into my design space. It, it goes through this and says that it is being added. Oh, and this is the first time that I've actually gotten it to work. So I think there are possibly a few kinks to still work out. Um, if you try something that doesn't work, then maybe refresh your browser or something like that could be the answer. Good, now everything's going to work while I'm making this video. And they go right onto your design space, pick out your material and what you want to do with those items. Something else that I do like is this feature to mirror and flip your images. Say if you were cutting something on clear acrylic and you forgot to flip your design in Silhouette Studio uh, or whatever program you're using, you can come in here and tell it to flip it and mirror it for you. You can switch those back and forth. Um, it will also flip it in this direction. So that's just a great tool. It's probably my favorite thing so far to be able to flip your image like that. The next feature are your simple shapes. This allows you to put a circle and a square and lines on your design space. So the line you can move into any position, make it as long as you want. I'm sure you could add, you know, a couple of different lines onto the screen to make your own specific shapes that you want. So with these shapes, you can drag from the corner and usually that's going to resize it proportionately. And then if you hold down shift key, you can resize it in any way that you want to. Now I have had that flip flop on me while I've been testing this out. Uh, one time I opened the circle and when I resized it from the corner, it was resizing it disproportionately. Just keep that in mind that if you hold the shift key down, Sometimes that might mean do it proportional, and sometimes it might mean let me do it freely. So try it either way, depending on how it's feeling that day. Maybe again, that'll be something that gets the bugs worked out. So same thing with the square. Right now I'm not holding down the shift key, and it is doing it proportionate, but now I'm going to hit the shift key, and I can resize it in any way that I need to. So I really do love having access to these simple shapes because I can't tell you how many times um, I'm making an ornament or a keychain and I forgot to add the circle. And what good is an ornament or a keychain if you have no circle to hang it by? 
So this would be something great that instead of having to go back into Silhouette Studio, create a circle or a square, and then save that file and then upload it into the Glowforge user interface here, now we just click a button and add our circle or square. So that would save you a ton of time right there. And this box here that I'm sure you've seen pop up by now, this is a part of Glowforge Print, which is a free new feature that is available to everybody. Um, this is showing you the position of your object on the screen. So my square right here is highlighted and you can see as I move it around the screen, my X and my Y are changing values. This would come in handy if you had two objects that you wanted to align perfectly. Say I wanted my square and my cat to be aligned. I'm going to set this square to something that I can remember. Let's see, 8 by 5. And then I'm going to set my cat to the same position. And that puts my cat directly in the middle of that box. It will line things up and center them as long as you have it selected to this middle button here because that's telling you to align your objects based on the center of that object. Um, if you click on the button here, that is going to be your point here and so forth all the way around. So this button tells you the position of this dot and so forth and so on. So you always want to make sure that your relative positions to the two objects you're trying to align are using the same dot to calculate that position. The other thing with this box is of course the width and the height. Before we would have to guesstimate basically our size of our object by dragging it over here to the toolbar but now it will tell you exactly how wide and how high your objects are and also you can type exactly um, how big you want them in there and it will resize it for you. I did also read that it would do math for you. So I just typed in two millimeters and it changed it. So we'll type in three millimeter here and it automatically converted that to inches. That is pretty awesome. Make that back into an object that we can see. So we have our square here and if you click on this uh, lock aspect ratio chain link thing, then that means that it will resize it proportionately for you. No matter what I put in here as my width, it will change the height to correspond. So as soon as I hit enter, that should update to 10 inches. And it did. Now if we unclick this, then it's going to allow the width and the height to um, act separately. If I click 7 here, this should say the same as soon as I hit enter. And it does. This box is useful, but the current gripe is that you can't move this on your screen. It's stuck in this position down here in the corner. Sometimes it does get in the way of what you're trying to do on your workspace. So if I wanted to move my square down here and try to see it on my board right now, I can't even see where it's at because this box is in the way. And there's no way to move it, but I do expect them to change that in the future so that you can drag it around wherever you need to on your workspace. The current workaround I've been using is either to come up here and make my workspace smaller, and then it won't be in the way of what I'm trying to see anymore. And another option, if you want it at 100% and it's in your way, you can move the workspace over by using your grab hand up here. Now if we go back and click on the arrow and select our shape again, kind of still in the way so you would have to just move it over further. This kind of is a problem in that aspect but again I do expect them to update that because a lot of people have voiced their complaints on that subject. So let's go ahead and move our workspace back over and try out the next feature which is this text option. I'm going to type in thank you Gavin because he used my code to purchase his Glowforge and I appreciate it. Let's see what our options are down here. So this gives us some different boldness and italic options. So let's go here and look and see what that font is. That is pretty cool uh, to have all of these fonts at your fingertips.
we'll make this bigger. And again, your options to flip and mirror your text are available again. There's just a ton of fonts listed in here. And these are not ones that I had loaded on my computer. These are the ones that are available through Glowforge. I'm going to scroll through this quickly, but you can just see how many are on here. For the next feature, which is an outline feature, say if you wanted to engrave this Thank You Gavin text, you would go over here and make sure it's set to engrave, which it is, and then you would go up here to this mountain looking icon and select it. And that's going to create an offset around your text or your shape. So we'll click on that and you'll see that it has put this offset around our words. And then you can use the slider to make that offset as big or as small as you need it to be. And let's see, for our cat, let's try to do an outline. Okay, also these, you can't move around your screen either. So we're going to have to move our design space over. And the good thing about this is that you can go back to your outline and adjust it just by clicking on it again. And inside offset, you can go into your negative numbers, and you can see that's making the offset go internal to your original cat design. And then your positive numbers are going to be going around the outside of your cat. That is, again, a very cool feature to have. These options right here do look the same to me. I don't think anything has changed there. So we had our basic icons to choose from and to add artwork onto your design space. Then you had your shapes that you could use. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but I was only talking about cutting out a design, but you can also engrave a square or score a square if you needed to. It's not just for cutting. And then we had our text, which had a ton of options here for fonts. And then again, once you select something, you can create an outline around it. So if nothing is selected, of course, your outline is not going to be a lit up option. That basically covers all of the features. Again, all of these up here with the diamond and all of your graphics in this plus sign are going to be part of the Glowforge Premium package. And the box here that tells you the position is just a new feature that is part of the free Glowforge print. I think the best thing about having these features in the Glowforge user interface is that it'll open up the door for a lot of people who don't have the background experience in the design programs, uh, such as Silhouette Studio, Inkscape, and all the others that people are using to design. So this will be something that allows someone to come in and easily create something and get printing on their Glowforge even sooner. If you're excited about these features and want to buy your Glowforge, please consider using my promotional code that I'll link in the description. You'll save $500 off the Pro, $250 off a Plus, or $100 off the basic model, and I get the same in return in Glowforge credits to buy material so I can keep creating and making videos. What did you think about all these new features? I think I'll wait and see how much they're going to charge us to use the premium features. All of these, of course, are something that I could be doing in Silhouette Studio. It is very nice to have them right here at my fingertips, but of course, depending on how much that convenience is going to cost, will determine if that's a feature that I want to pay for or not. Drop your comments below, like, and subscribe, and as always, thank you so much for watching.